Hey guys, welcome to our study on the Sermon on the Mount. Thanks for joining me. I want to start off by playing a game, so I want you to get comfortable. I want you to get loose and get, maybe you want to stand up, move your arms around. We're going to play a game. It's an old game, but it's a cool game. And that is the game called Simon Says. You guys remember the rules? I can't, I, I won't be there to hold you accountable and make sure you're really not cheating. But the rules are real simple. I'm going to give you some instructions. And what I want you to do is Every time I sit, give an instruction, if I say, Simon says, then you're supposed to do it. But if I don't say Simon says, what happens? You're not supposed to do it. So if I were to say, Simon says, touch your nose, you all should have your hands on your nose. Come on, mom and dad, if you're watching, you got to play the game too. Touch your nose, mom and dad. If Simon says, touch your head, then what do you do? You can do it with either one. You can do it either way. What if I say, touch your tummy? Oh! If you touched your tummy, you're, you're, you're not playing right. You're not following the rules. You only do it when Simon says. So Simon says, raise your hands. Simon says, lower your hands. Simon says, cross your arms. Now reach for the sky. <gasps> no, don't reach for the sky. Simon didn't say. You see, this game is real simple because what you're supposed to do is you listen for that key word, that sign that says, Simon says. But sometimes we get tricked into doing it the other way and we, oh, I messed up and I didn't. And it's no big deal when you're doing a game, because if you don't follow the signs, if you don't follow the words, what happens? Well, you lose, and that's okay. You Maybe next time you'll win. Maybe next time you'll do better. Who knows? I want you to imagine you're riding your bike. You're with your parents, and you're riding your bike, and you're cruising down the road, and you see the big red sign that says S-T-O-P on it. And what do you do? Well, that's a sign, and it warns you, and you know. What do you do when you see that stop sign? You stop because if you go across, you might get hit by a car going the other way. And that's not good because that could kill you. And that's bad. And so what I, one, one of the things is Jesus gets to the end of the sermon here. He's getting his, this is called the Sermon on the Mount because Jesus, he taught this lesson while he was sitting on a hillside. And he's given us a bunch of really cool stuff. And we've been talking about some cool stuff that Jesus wants us to do. But he gets to the end and he says, now, I've just told you a bunch of cool stuff to do. But let me warn you a little bit. I want to give you some signs you need to pay attention to because you don't want to get off track. You don't want to mess up. And you don't want to... you you got to pay attention. So in, in Matthew chapter 7, verse, thir verse, uh, verse 13, it says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is, is, is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Talks about this big, this big, huge path that so, that a lot of people try to go on, a lot of people end up on. But then there's also this little bitty gate, and he says, "Go through that narrow gate. Push yourself. Don't fall for the tricks that are out there." As he gets into the next section, he even talks about a wolf in sheep's clothing. As there's people that are trying to mislead you. They're trying to get you to do the wrong stuff and bail on what God says. Don't fall for it. When people are telling you don't do what God says, what do you need to do? I'm, 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 I'm not listening. You need to ignore them. You need to make sure you're not paying attention to them because they're wolves in sheep's clothing. Or even at the next part, the other warning sign he gives, he says, a warning sign when you forget to do what God wants and you get it all about doing what you want. He talks about how sometimes even going to church and I can go to church and I'm like, oh, I don't like it when they do this. or I don't like it when they do that. I'm making it all about me, aren't I? Or when I do things for God and I forget, is this about doing it God's will and making him happy or is this about making me happy? I can, make the, I can make Jesus' teachings all about trying to make me happy and doing what I want, can't I? You know, don't forget why we do what we do as Christians. We do it because we love God and we want to draw near to Him. And if you start falling, getting lured away because you want people to see you or you want pe people to think, oh, you're such a good person. Well, that's not a bad thing. But warning sign, don't forget to do what God's will is, and that's to love Him. Don't forget to do it because you have such a good relationship with him. Don't forget to do it because you really care about him. Pay attention to the warning signs in your life. I encourage you, spend some time reading Matthew 5, 6, and 7. 
great stuff. Jesus, Jesus story about how we're supposed to live. Get wrapped up in that. Read it out loud if you can. Get your mom and dad to read it with you even. And then talk about how can we do what he says because that's going to make your life so much better. Thanks for spending time with me watching this video. Pay attention to the warning signs. But make sure you grow closer to God and live like he wants you to. Thanks, for, thanks again. Have a great day.